This is Hansel. You know, it's good to that uh, Honorable Fatuma knows. Uh, I, 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 she's saying she's going to substantiate. And uh, the reason why it was not challenged to withdraw on the spot is because the matter is grave. Yeah? Otherwise, uh, the standing order that you read would have uh, demanded that she withdraws on the moment because the substitution should be instantaneous for those that have been here or that have cared to follow the standing orders properly. But I have followed, I've taken, this is the answer of two days ago. The Honorable Fatou Magedi is recorded as having said, Honorable Speaker, give me two days and I will bring details on how William Ruto has grabbed land in this country. This is what is, uh, Hansan shows. The speaker said, very well, Honorable Fatuma, you are, you are the one who has uh, undertaken to provide evidence. Do not listen to those giving you stories, because several members were trying to interject and tell her some other things. Uh, but to what I am saying, ordinarily, we do not allow people to say they will provide evidence after two days. When you say something here, you are expecting to, bring, to, have, to have materials, but given the gravity of what you have said, I will, I will allow you, therefore, Thursday 14th, April 2022, at 2.30 p.m., we expect Honorable Fatuma Gedi to, to bring the, to substantiate. It's only fair that we allow her time to provide, to provide the material she has alluded to. And some honor members are shown to have said, oh, all parcels of uh, land that she has mentioned. And the speaker says, Honorable Fatuma, you say that you will provide evidence. You talked about Taita Tafeta, like Kipia, and even Wajia. Can you go on record? And Honorable Fatuma, and she said, and we said, I told members not to put words into her mouth. Honorable Fatuma Gedi is shown to have said, Honorable Speaker, I'll provide on the following, on the following, Langata Primary, Taita Tafeta, like Kipia and Mutesh. And I, 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 the record shows that I, I asked, what is Mutesh? The Honorable Fatuma, uh, she says, Honorable Speaker, it is a hundred acre piece of land. That is what Mutesh, that is what Mutesh is. Loud consultations followed. Then I asked, where? The Honorable Fatuma says, Mutesh. <laughs> Honorable, the Speaker goes on to say, there is no place called Mutesh in Kenya. Honorable members, the Honorable Fatuma is serious about what she is saying. It's only fair that I do not, it's, it is only that I do not know. I know the geography of this country, but I do not know of any, any part called Mutesh. And Honorable Fatuma said, let me clarify. And they say, I told her, yes, please proceed. He says, Honorable Speaker, you already ruled that on Thursday I should bring evidence. Mutesh is land which belonged to the late Mutesh and is in Transoya. And I ask, in Transoya, Fatuma, the Honorable Fatuma says, yes. And I say, very well. Honorable Fatuma is shown, Honorable Speaker, if you allow me, I'll bring the details on Thursday at 2.30 p.m. And I'm on record showing, saying, thank you. And we agree that uh, the Honorable Fatuma is doing that. And she has, he didn't approach me and saying that she's going to do that. So that is clear from that point. One of our members, uh, not in anticipation, but as you know, there's always, I always uh, have to go back to records and see how we have treated situations of this nature. Uh, the, an incident happened on the 20, 27th of April in 1993. And it followed something which had been there on on 22nd. 22nd of April 1993, during the second reading of the Veterinary Surgeon's Amendment Bill, the member for Kisumu Ruro, the Honorable Professor Anyang Nyongo, rose on a point of order with the intention to adjourn debate on the bill for the, for the House to discuss a matter of a claim that the Central Bank of Kenya was being robbed about 25 billion a week. He proceeded to table certain documents in support of the claim, albeit without the Speaker's consent. And therefore, on 27th of April, 1993, Speaker Caparo observed that the member did not explain what the papers were about, or the origins of the papers, and there are no signatures. 
The speaker then ruled that the papers purportedly laid on the table of the House by the Honorable Anyang Nyongo could not be admitted into the records of the House for the reason that the member did not follow the procedure for laying papers as exemplified, as explained. He clarified that though the rest restrictive, the guidance was meant to ensure that papers laid on the table are legitimate. On 10th of September 2009, that's the 10th Parliament, the then Minister for Justice, National Cohesion and Constitutional Affairs, the Honorable Mother Karua, tabled some documents relating to corruption allegations. After scrutinizing the document, the Speaker Marende ascertained that the documents were not signed, and on the 10th of September 2009, Speaker ruled that the documents were inadmissible and would not be allowed to go on the records of the House. Then on the, 11th, on the 18th of January 2011, the then member for Georgia, the Honorable William Kabogo, tabled on three documents. One, a letter dated on 20th of December 2010 from the same member addressed to the Minister for State, Minister of, Minister of State for Provincial Administration and Internal Security and the Acting Minister for Foreign Affairs, the late Professor George Saitoti. B, a document titled, in brackets, classified information in the United States. And C, a document which the Honorable Member described as dossier, containing the names of Honorable Members said to be involved in drug trafficking. The Speaker undertook to acquaint himself with the documents in order to establish their authenticity, or otherwise, and determine their admissibility. Among the considerations that the Speaker relied on included the requirement for signatures on the documents and some form of certification where a document other than the original has been tabled. Speaker Marende made the following directions on the 18th of January. A, with respect to the letter from the member for Georgia, Speaker observed that the letter had, be, had been done on the member's letterhead it bore the member's signature and was stamped as having been received by the Minister, for, Minister of State, Office of the President, on 20th of December 20, 2009. With that, the Speaker ruled that the letter was admissible. B, with respect to the document titled Classified Information in the United States, the Speaker observed that the document appeared to have been downloaded from Wikipedia website a free online encyclopedia that contains articles not necessarily owned by anyone and which allows any person to end it anonymously and post and post it as articles. The speaker then ruled that the document was inadmissible on account that it was sourced from an unknown publisher. The source permits anonymous uh, alteration of, of contents and the article freely in the public domain was free in the public domain. And see, on the so-called dossier, Speaker ruled that the paper was inadmissible because he noted that the document, one, was not dated, two, had no indication of the author or whom it was addressed to, three, bore a stamp appearing to be for Kenya Anti-Corruption Commission, KECC, without indicating the date when the stamp was uh, imprinted on and by who, four, had no signature, or any other form of identification of the source or ownership. The Speaker further ordered that the two documents be expunged from the records of the House and that all reference made thereto, the names of the honorable members in the context of the document be expunged from the records of the House. The fourth example, and I'm doing this out of abundance of caution, because I'll deal with the other the smaller issue, the one which was raised by the Honorable Tiende, it's fairly small. I would, I would just demonstrate. The fourth, the fourth incident was, it's, it's titled Kazi Kwavijana KKV Program, 1st of November 2011. On the 26th of October 2011, the then Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Local Government, while issuing a statement during Prime Minister's time on the implementation of Kazi Kwavijana KKV Program, tabled several documents which the speaker undertook to examine before determining their admissibility or otherwise. On the 1st of November 2011, the speaker admitted two of the documents, but ruled that one on the 
Kenya Portfolio Financial Management Supervision, June 2011, interim and unvalidated reports, in-depth review of the 10th of September 2011, which was imprinted stri strictly confidential. They cited the following reasons for their inadmissibility. One, it was not signed. Two, does not have a forwarding letter or detail of the other. Three, efforts to access it on World Bank website for validation were futile. And after scrutinizing the documents, the Speaker Marende, Speaker Marende then ascertained that the documents were not signed. And on 10th of September 2009, Speaker ruled that the documents were inadmissible and would not be allowed to go on the records of the House. Honourable members, there are several other examples that follow with regard to drug trafficking, many of them which have become, come to form the history. The summary of all this is as follows. By established practice and procedure of the House, in considering admissibility or authenticity or otherwise of a document tabled in the House, the Speaker examines if the following. If the document, one, relates to the matter for which it has been tabled, two, is, is signed, and if it's a government document by the authorized person or persons, three, bears the emblem or logo of the institution. You know, it is important that, uh, I hope the member is listening, because, because this, is, this, is, this is a test by established practice. It is important that this is a test to, to be applied. One, if the, if the document relates to the matter for which it has been tabled. Two, is signed, and if it's a government document by the authorized person or persons. Three, bears the emblem or logo of the institution stroke person from which it originated, or coat of arms, in the case of a document from the government agency, from government agencies, four, whether the document clearly indicates the author and the person to whom it is addressed, five, whether the document disc discloses the origin stroke source of it, six, whether it bears certification where a document other than the original is being tabled, seven, if electronic, whether it has been obtained from a source that does not permit alteration of contents, in brackets, rule of admiss admissibility of electronic documents, electronic evidence, and eight, if it relates to a claim made before the House or a committee, its content as a nexus with a claim, and finally, whether it is stamped and clearly indicates the person signing off the stamp. That is and so far as the technical part is concerned. That is the checklist. Now, the Honorable Tia Amolo has uh, 